Hello everyone, welcome to Rushchem summary videos. In this video, I'm summarizing the lesson food molecules. Okay, first we'll look at the proteins. Okay, so proteins are made from amino acids. So the structure of amino acid is given here. This is called alpha amino acid O2 amino acid. The C double bond, it has a C double bond OH group, then NH2 group. The middle carbon has a hydrogen and an R group. So why I call this as two amino acid. This is the carbon number one, the C double OH carbon takes carbon number one. This is carbon number two. The carbon number two has NH2 group. That's why I call two amino acid. So amino acids can exist in different forms depending on the solution. So we can have the cation form, the sweet ion form and the anion form. The sweet ion form is the neutral form which exists in intermediate pH where you have C double O minus and NH3 plus. So what happens here, the C double O H group, we know it's acidic. The acidic group can remove H plus, so it becomes C double O minus. And the NH2 group is a basic group which can take H plus to become NH3 plus. So now in this form, you call sweet ion form, where you have both plus and minus, so it's a neutral form which exists uh, at intermediate pHs. And then we have the plus form or the cation form which exists at low pHs or acidic solutions. If the solution is acidic, the NH2 group, so this NH2 group can take H pluses. That's how it becomes NH3 plus. And we have the anion form or the negative form at high pHs or in alkaline solution where the C double low H groups remove uh, H plus to make C double low minus. So those are the three forms of amino acid existing different solutions depending on the pH. Okay, so what is a dipeptide? So when two amino acids to react together, we get dipeptides. So the condensation reaction happened here, where you remove water molecules between two amino acids to get a dipeptide and water. Okay, so we will see how do you draw the dipeptide between glycine and alanine. Okay, you can see here, I have first uh, taken glycine, then I have alanine. So now I remove water. So I have C double OH group and NH2 group. So from glycine, I take the OH from the C double OH group. And from alanine, I take the H from the NH2 group to remove water. So after that, you join them up. So you have nitrogen, which has two hydrogen. So you still have the NH2 group from, one, from glycine, which has CH2. Okay, so then we have C double bond O. The OH is removed and the H from the other one is removed. So then it's NH, then CH, CH3, and then you have C double O, OH in the other side. So this molecule is called a dipeptide. And you can see in this dipeptide, this new functional group is called amide or peptide functional group. So two amino acids are then linked by what? Amide or a peptide functional group. And the other product here is dipeptide and you get water molecule as the byproduct. So if you have two different amino acids, I can get two dipeptides. So I just did one of, uh, one of them here. Right, so to get the first dipeptide, I did glycine first and then the alanine. If you want to get the second dipeptide, you draw alanine first and then do glycine next to that. And again, you remove water, you will get another molecule that is the second dipeptide. Okay, so we'll now look at the structures of protein. So protein has three, uh, four structures called primary, secondary, tertiary, and the quaternary structure. So primary structure is the sequence of amino acids. So how the amino acids are, in which order, what are the amino acids, and how many amino acids are arranged. So that's the sequence of amino acids. You can see this, that this is the primary structure where the amino acids are held by the amide or the peptide linkage. In the secondary structure, 
So in the secondary structure, the hydrogen bonds will form between the peptide links. So if you take the primary structure here, so these are the peptide links. Now, these peptide links are interacting via hydrogen bonding. So because of that, the polypeptide chain will, uh, will coil to make alpha helixes or it will line up parallel to form beta pleated sheets. So what you have to remember about secondary structure, the secondary structure we get due to the hydrogen bond formation between peptide links, right? So because of that, you can get alpha helixes like that, or we can get beta pleated sheets. And then the tertiary structure. So in tertiary structure, we get when the R groups are interacting. So that is the overall three-dimensional shape adopted by the protein that's called the tertiary structure. The secondary structure will now fold three-dimensionally like this to get give the tertiary structure. So R groups in some amino acid interact with R groups of another amino acid in the same polypeptide chain to give the tertiary structure. So there can be a lot of different types of interactions between R groups, can be dispersion forces, can be dipole dipole interactions, hydrogen bonding, disulfide bridges, ionic interactions like that. You can have many type of interactions between R groups. And finally, the quaternary structure. So in this structure, several individual polypeptide chains cluster together. So in all these structures, it's just we are talking about one polypeptide chain, but in the quaternary structure, the several polypeptide chains are interacting to give a 3D, a final 3D shape to the protein that's called the quaternary structure. This is one example of a quaternary structure. Again, in quaternary structure, the peptide chains can interact through different types of interactions like dispersion forces, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, any type of interaction. Okay, now we will look at fats and oils. So this is showing the formation of a triglyceride or we call a fat, a fat and oil. So to make a triglyceride, we need one glycerol and three fatty acids. The structures of glycerol and fatty acids are given in your data book. So you can use your data book when you draw the triglyceride. So you can see glycerols, they have three OHs and fatty acids are carboxylic acid, long chain carboxylic acids like this. So I again do a condensation reaction where I remove OH and H. So you can see so I remove OH from the carboxyl group and that H from the glycerol. So like that, I can remove three water molecules. So after that, I can join up the molecule, right? So after removing water, you can see you have three carbons, right? Now you still have these oxygens, right? Now those oxygens will bonded to this C double bondo from the fatty acid. So C double bondo, then the rest of the carbon chain. Right, so like that, you get this big molecule. This is called a triglyceride by, and also it will remove three water molecules. So you can see the new functional group uh, formed in the triglyceride is COO, which is the ester link. So then fats and oils contain what? Ester linkages, like the proteins contain amidopeptide linkages. The fats and oil, they have ester linkages. Okay, so what are the types of fats? We can have saturated fats, monounsaturated, and we can have polyunsaturated. So saturated is when, uh, when the fatty acid contains only carbon-carbon single bonds. If it is monounsaturated, the fatty acid will have one carbon-carbon double bond, like in oleic acid, you can see the structure from your data book. Oleic acid just have one carbon-carbon double bond. If it is polyunsaturated, there'll be more than one carbon-carbon double bond, like linolenic acid and linoleic acid. So when we talk about unsaturated fats, we can classify them as omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. So what is the difference between omega-3 and omega-6? Okay, so if you take omega-3 fatty acid, like linolenic acid, because this is the semi-structural formula, right? The CH3 carbon is called the omega carbon or the last carbon because the first carbon is the CWOH carbon. So this is the last carbon, the omega carbon. 
right? So now when you count from the omega carbon or the CH3 end, where is the first double bond? You can see in this formula, the first double bond is on the third carbon. That's the first, this is the omega carbon. So you count from here. So one, two, three. The first double bond is starting at the third carbon. That's why I call it is omega three. So then how do I know omega six? How do I find omega six? So like that, you have to start from omega n or the CH3 n and you count and see where is the first double bond. Now the first double bond, double bond will be on the sixth carbon, starting at the sixth carbon. You can see here CH3. So one, right, you have four carbons here, so which means five, and that's the sixth carbon. So therefore, this one is, so this is a linoleic acid, which is then uh, omega-6 fatty acid. So this is how you find omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Okay, so what we know about melting points of fats and oils. The melting point of a fatty acid increases with the number of carbon atoms, right? So that's because when there are more carbon atoms, they can make more dispersion forces. So stronger the dispersion forces, more energy needed to break them. So therefore the melting point will increase. However, the melting point show the opposite pattern with the number of carbon-carbon double bonds, which means greater the number of carbon-carbon double bonds, lower the melting point. The reason is when there are double bonds, around the double bond, they have a cis arrangement. So due to this cis arrangement, there are kings, or we can say bends in the molecule. So when there are bends in the molecule, the molecules can't pack closely. Therefore, the strength of dispersion forces will be less. So if the strength of dispersion forces are less, then less energy uh, to melt them, right? So more double bonds means more kings in the molecule. Therefore, the molecules are not packed tightly. So therefore, uh, less stronger dispersion forces, therefore lower melting point. Okay, so now we look at carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, we have three types, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and the polysaccharides. So monosaccharides are the simplest carbohydrates just with one unit. So we have glucose, galactose, and fructose. So these are the structures. But if you count uh, the carbons, hydrogens, oxygen, you will see they all have the same numbers. So the formula here is C6H12O6 for all of them. So because they all have the same molecular formula, but three different structures, you can say they are isomers. And they are soluble in water. You can see they have a lot of OHs, which means they can make hydrogen bonds with water. So these uh, monosaccharides are highly soluble in water. Okay, now we will look at uh, disaccharides. So disaccharide is formed when two monosaccharides join together, right? Again, by condensation reactions. So now I, here I have taken uh, two monosaccharides, right? So you remove water again. So how do I remove water? I can remove so one of these OHs, right? So OH from there, and I can remove one H from here. So this H I can remove. So OH and H will make what? Water, so you get one water molecule. And this oxygen here, now, so it's bonded to the carbon here. So you have carbon, oxygen, and now this oxygen will bind to that carbon there. So making a new functional group. So we have C, O, C. So this is called glycosidic linkage or ether linkage. So in disaccharide, then we have glycosidic linkages. So this is a disaccharide. And also when you make one disaccharide, it's making, it's removing one water molecule. Okay, so now we will look at polysaccharides. So polysaccharides are polymers made from many monomers or many glucose units. And between each glucose unit, a water molecule will be, which, between a two glucose units, a water molecule will be uh, removed. Okay, so we learn, uh, we learn three polysaccharides, which are starch, cellulose, and glycogen. Okay, so what we need to know about them. So starch is produced in plants by polymerization of alpha glucose. You need to know which type of glucose is polymerizing. Right. So starch has two forms called amylose and amylopectin. So amylose is the linear form, which is insoluble in water. 
and amylopectin is a branch form which is uh, soluble in cold water. And then we have cellulose. So cellulose is a straight chain polymer formed from the polymerization of beta glucose. And then we have glycogen. Glycogen is the energy st uh, storing molecule in our body, so which is formed by alpha glucose and it's highly branched. Okay, so then about vitamins, so we mainly focus on vitamin C and vitamin D. The structures are given in your data book. So you have these two structures in the data book. So if you look at the structure of vitamin C, you can see it's a small structure with the four H groups. So because of that, it can make, uh, it is soluble in water because it, these OHs can make hydrogen bonds with water. So I can say then uh, vitamin C is polar and water molecule, uh, sorry, for a polar and water soluble, right? Found in the blood because it's water soluble, it'll, found, it'll be found in the blood and passes from the body in urine and it is therefore it is not stored in the body. That's the structure of vitamin D. So it's a big molecule where you just have only one OH group. So therefore I can't say it's water soluble, it's largely nonpolar, only one OH group. So only one OH group and the rest of the molecule is nonpolar. Makes dispersion forces with lipids because the molecule is largely nonpolar, it can make dispersion forces with lipids, right? So therefore it will be fat soluble. So it's stored in the fatty tissues. So those are the differences between vitamins, vitamin C and vitamin D. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Now it's time to do questions. You can practice questions from Roshkem um, study guide three and four. So you can find questions and summary notes on pages 131 to 141. And thanks for watching my video. If you need any uh, further information, please visit our website, www.rushchem.com. Uh, www Thank you. I'll see you in another video.